everybody! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. A little while ago, we made a scrunchy style hair piece by crocheting around a basic hair elastic. And this works really well. But today, we thought we would go one step further and make a full-on hair scrunchy, the kind you might remember from the 1990s. Today's tutorial is going to take you through how to make a hair scrunchie. And this is a very variable pattern, so you can make it to fit hair like mine, which is a little on the thin side, or if you have much thicker hair, you just want to cut your elastic 5 centimeters or 2 inches longer than mine and add an extra 5 centimeters or 2 inches worth of chains in your foundation chain row. We also know a lot of you are still new to crochet and learning how to read patterns, so we thought today's tutorial would make a great follow along. And we have a free written copy of today's pattern available on our website. We'll put the link to our website in the description box down below. You want to go to the pattern workshop page, scroll through all of our free patterns, find this one, print it off, bring it back, and you can follow along with the pattern and the tutorial while we make this hair scrunchie together. It's kind of a neat way to learn how a pattern is built. It's a very basic pattern, but it will set you up for learning how to follow along more complicated ones down the road. So, without further ado, let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up a hair scrunchie together. In order to make our hair scrunchies, you need a very small amount of acrylic or cotton yarn. Both of those fibers would be fine for this project. I'm using a lighter weight size 3 yarn, but you can use size 4, like a medium weight, or even a size 5 chunky weight for this project. Just make sure that you adjust your hook size to match the weight of the yarn you are using. You may also want a measuring tape, that might come in handy, a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, I'm using a 4.25 millimeter hook, or a G6, for my yarn that I've chosen, but you may wish to upsize your hook a little bit if you're using a thicker yarn. You're also going to need a little sewing elastic. This is a 3 millimeter, or fairly thin elastic. Uh, you can find it at any sewing store or craft store or anywhere that they sell sewing supplies. I found mine at Walmart. And you can also use an elastic that's just a little bit wider than this. It doesn't have to be this uh, narrow. And you're also going to need a needle and some thread. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. First, cut yourself a length of your sewing elastic that's roughly 15 centimeters or 6 inches. And when it's sort of put together in a circle, it's about that big around in the palm of your hand. Next, we're going to grab our yarn, start with a slip knot. And we're going to begin chaining a foundation length that's about two inches or five centimeters longer than the piece of elastic that we've cut. Once you've chained a length of yarn that's a couple inches or five centimeters or so longer than the elastic length that you've cut, chain one more for a turning chain, skip over that chain, find the second one from the hook, and half double crochet into it. You're going to half double crochet in each chain all the way back to the beginning and since these are very unique uh, beginning foundation chains the actual stitch count doesn't matter but you do want your rows to be even so I recommend counting the number of stitches you have at the end of row one and then making sure you have the same number of stitches at the end of every row for the rest of this little project. Once you've finished half double crocheting in every single chain, take a moment and count all of the stitches you have in row one. That's the same number of stitches you should have in each row going forward. For me, that happens to be 40. At the end of every row, you're going to chain one, turn your work, and you're just going to half double crochet in every stitch all the way to the end. Every row, chain one, turn, half double crochet in every single stitch. You're going to continue this little pattern of half double crochet every stitch, chain one turn at the end of each row until your piece of fabric measures seven and a half centimeters or three inches tall. That's an approximate number. Try to get near that length, or I should say that height, and I will see you when your fabric piece measures approximately seven and a half centimeters or three inches tall. 
Once your piece of fabric is approximately seven and a half centimeters tall or three inches, then you can snip your yarn and fasten off. Leave yourself a nice long tail because we are going to be doing some sewing. So I've got quite a long tail here. Next you want to grab your yarn needle and weave in that little short tail that you've got from the very beginning. Once you've woven in that little short tail, thread up the really long tail you left on your yarn needle. And then you're going to take your piece of fabric and you're going to fold it in half lengthwise. You're going to pair up each set of stitches. So you've got the last row of stitches over here and you've got your foundation chain row over here. And you're just going to sew through each side so find each set of stitches, the corresponding stitch and its matching foundation chain. And whatever number you have in your first row or your last row should be the same. So you should have the same number of chains and stitches running across the long side of your scrunchie here. And you're just going to very simply sew through each set of stitches to sew up that long seam. So take your time, no rush. Work your way along the length of your scrunchie and I'll see you at the end. When you're finished sewing, you should have a little tube that looks like this. It's open on both ends and it's all seamed up on one side. Now if you like your stitching, you don't have to turn your tube inside out. But if you feel that your stitching is a little messy, you can take a moment and turn your whole tube inside out so that the inside is on the outside. Next we're going to thread up our elastic. Now you may find that a couple of safety pins are helpful for this part. We're going to take one pin and just anchor one little end of your elastic to the edge, so to one edge of your scrunchie. And then you're going to take the other safety pin and just pin it to the opposite end of your elastic. And you're going to thread it through your scrunchie. So putting the pin on it kind of helps it make, you can sort of feel the actual um, pin if you sort of squish it through your scrunchie. So this might take a little wiggling and squiggling, <laughs> but ultimately you want to get your piece of elastic all the way through to the other side. Once you've got your elastic all the way through to the other side, make sure you didn't accidentally poke it through the sides of your scrunchie. You're going to hold on to that piece. So this is the part that came through the other side. You're going to hold on to that nice and tightly. And then you're going to very carefully unhook your other piece of elastic from the other side of your scrunchie. So remember that your elastic is a lot smaller than your scrunchie. So carefully unhook that part and then you're going to pull up both ends to meet each other. And we're just going to pin both ends together in preparation for sewing. Next, you're going to take your sewing needle and thread. Make sure you've got a nice little knot at the end of your sewing thread. Grab your scrunchie, grab those two pieces, so the two ends of your elastic. You might want to pull them out a little bit and you're going to overlap them. So if you're using a slightly wider uh, sewing elastic than I am, then you might find this part a little easier. But you just want to overlap the ends, and then you're just going to sew the two ends together. This does not have to be tidy. If you are not comfortable doing a lot of hand sewing, then this is a great little project <laughs> for you because your sewing stitches do not need to be tidy or clean, they just need to work. So you're going to just work your way around that little overlap of the elastic, making sure that your sewing needle and thread go through both sides so that both ends are nice and tightly sewn together and they're not going to come undone. Once you're satisfied that those two overlapping ends are nice and tightly sewn together, you can just create a little knot with your sewing yarn, or sewing thread in this case. 
I like to knot it off a couple times just to make sure it's not going anywhere. There we go. All right, and that is it for the sewing needle and thread. Now your two ends are together, and all that's left to do is sew up the open end of your scrunchie. So what you're gonna do is find that long tail that you sewed up the back seam with. You're going to pair up the two seam edges. It doesn't matter if there's a little bit of twisting because this is, after all, a scrunchie. So find where your seams are. And if it's hard to do, that's a good thing. That means you made a good, nice, <laughs> neat and tidy seam. <laughs> pair up the edges. So open up those two tube edges and you can thread your yarn back up on your yarn needle and you're just going to neatly sew those two open ends together. So pair up the two edges and make nice small little tiny wraparound stitches through the edge pieces of both sides of that open tube all the way around. Make sure you pause every once in a while to make sure you're just getting the edges. I like to keep my stitches sort of small and close together. That makes them nice and neat. And you can just slowly work your way all the way around that opening. Then your background to the beginning again. Give it a little tug to make sure there's no big gaps. And then you can just knot off your yarn the same way that we knotted off our sewing thread. So just pick up a little tiny stitch, either a piece of a, a, a crochet stitch or a sewing stitch, doesn't matter. I like to knot a couple times just to make sure that it's not going anywhere. Make that tiny, tiny little knot as tight as you can. And then you can just sort of weave in the tail underneath some of the stitches that are in a nearby row. Doesn't have to be neat and tidy. You just don't want that end coming undone. So back and forth through some stitches there. And then I'm just going to kind of push it through to the middle, out one little end, and I'm going to trim it up. And there we go. One <laughs> hair scrunchie. Ba -ba. <laughs> and there you go, your very own hair scrunchie. You can make it to fit any size thickness of hair by varying the length of the elastic and the length of the foundation chain row. Make sure you pop over to our webpage and get your free copy of this pattern if you haven't already from our pattern workshop page. And a big special thank you to everybody who's also popped into our tip jar page and left us a tip. We really appreciate your support of us here at the Jade and Stitches Show. And that's it for this week, everyone. I hope you enjoyed making this scrunchie along with me, and we will see you soon on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week. Bye, everybody.